Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this. In this lab, we will take a look at the point-to-point -point protocol, PPP. PPP is a layer two protocol often used over serial WAN or wide area network connections. On a Cisco router, the default layer two encapsulation on a serial connection is Cisco HDLC. However, PPP provides superior security through authentication functionality. So in this lab, we will configure PPP with two different authentication methods. On the connection between R1 and SPR1, meaning service provider router one, we will configure PPP with PAP, the password authentication protocol, which uses a static password to authenticate the connection. On the connection between R2 and SPR2, we will configure PPP with CHAP, the challenge handshake authentication protocol, which uses a dynamic randomly generated string providing greater security than a static, never-changing password. Let's get started. Let's start with R1. Enable. First, let's check what the encapsulation on S00 is. Show interfaces S00. There it is, encapsulation HDLC. Also, notice that the interface is in the up-down state. This is because there is an encapsulation mismatch. I've already configured the service provider routers and SPR1's S00 interface is already configured with PPP encapsulation. Let's try to ping SPR1. Ping 100.0.0.1. Doesn't work. Let's enable PPP on R1. Conf T interface S00, encapsulation PPP, do show IP interface brief. Now the interface is still up down because we haven't configured authentication yet on R1, but it's already configured on SPR1. I've already configured a username of Cisco and a password of CCNA on SPR1. So we have to configure R1 to send that username and password to SPR1 to authenticate. Likewise, SPR1 is currently trying to authenticate with the username of packet and a password of tracer. So we have to configure that username and password on R1. I'll do that first. Exit, username packet, password tracer. Now let's go back to the interface. Interface S00. Okay, next let's enable authentication. PPP authentication PAP. Now let's configure it to send the username of Cisco and password of CCNA to SPR1. PPP PAP sent hyphen username Cisco password CCNA. Now it can take a little time for the interface to come up, so I'll reset it to speed things up. Shut down. No shutdown. And I'll wait a few seconds just in case. Okay, let's check. Do show IP interface brief. Great, now the interface is up up. Let's see if we can ping SPR1. Do ping 100.0.0.1. Okay, now it works. So to summarize PPP with PAP. First, you must configure a username and password on your router, which the router on the other end will use to authenticate. Then you must configure the encapsulation of PPP on the interface with the command encapsulation PPP. Then you enable PAP authentication with PPP authentication PAP. Then you configure your router to send a username and password to the other router with a PPP PAP sent username password command. 
Of course, the router on the other end must have that username and password configured on it. In this lab, I pre-configured the username of Cisco and password of CCNA on SPR1. Next, let's configure PPP with CHAP authentication on R2. Once again, CHAP is more secure than PAP because it uses dynamic, randomly generated strings for each authentication, rather than a static password. However, you still have to configure a username and password on the router, which is then used to generate the string. So let's go on R2. Enable Show Interfaces S00. Just like on R1 before, the default encapsulation is HDLC, and the interface is in an up-down state because the SPR2 router has already been configured to use PPP with CHAP. Let's see if we can ping SPR2. Ping 200.0.0.1. As expected, it doesn't work. Conf T. Now let's create the username and password required for CHAP. The instructions say to use a password of CCNA, but what username should we use? The answer is that we must use the other router's host name. In this case, that is SPR2. So, username SPR2, password CCNA. This password has to match between the two routers. So I've already configured username R2, password CCNA, on the service provider side. For the CCNA routing and switching, you don't have to worry about the service provider end. That's for the service provider track of certifications. Now let's configure the interface. Interface S00. Let's shut it down while we do the configurations and then bring it back up when we're done. Shut down. Set the encapsulation to PPP like on R1. Encapsulation PPP. Now we only have one more command. PPP authentication chap. That's it. Let's enable the interface. No shutdown. Okay, and now let's check the status of the interface. Do show IP interface brief. The interface is up, up now. Let's try to ping the service provider. Do ping 200.0.0.1. Okay, it works now. I've already configured static default routes to the service provider, as you would often do in a real enterprise network. So let's see if we can ping R1 on the other side. Do ping 100.0.0.2. And it works as well. So to review PPP with CHAP, you must configure a user on the router with a username that is the other router's host name in this case, SPR2. And the password must be the same on both routers. Then enable PPP on the interface with the encapsulation PPP command and enable CHAP authentication with PPP authentication CHAP. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token donations in the Brave browser.